Yeah. So what I wanted to say <laughs> is that I've been obliged after all these years to introduce myself to the different people because I've been around a long time and all the people I knew 30, 40, 50 years ago or 10 years ago. Um, the first question is how would I like to be remembered? Well, I was involved with the, um, the recreation of our local business. Um, we done, went out in 1962 in the current revival, having performed last 1959 with the uh, um, at our King George, with the um, King George and the Pinnacle style, and so on. Um, well, what, what I put in that was to say, I was never the leader. I was not responsible for this lot in any way whatsoever, <laughs> despite what people say. I was asked to play because the musician uh, died before we got to the game. And our first agent was just for um, the local resident association for the Christmas party. We were one of the few mummers plays in which Father Christmas gets killed. And this actually upset all the children. Oh, and they, really? and you see their Christmas present disappear. Oh, no, it didn't. But me and all, it seems at the local level, is how I see them most. I also the fact that the customs are the local people, by the local people, on the whole. The other thing I should be remembered for, <laughs> that's seven of them. Yeah. Yeah. I say the eldest is 56 and the youngest is 42. <laughs> yeah, it's all there. I grew up here because in 1967 I was made responsible for the section which I was the youngest member. I said I've been around a long time, haven't I? I should be 18 last time. I was then at um, 60 years of course. 49 years of teaching. I taught first taught at Hallsway in 1963. I've stopped taking in 1972 and been playing since. But a long history of ill health leading up to my current state. I have a feeling you're a bit too far away. I'm going to see how this finishes. Left a bit. Bernie, come on. What started me off? was attended, going up to the hall with the library for um, some Morris event <coughs> and looking in the library and seeing the Helm Index, the Sharp Manuscript. Sharp's manuscript was on microfilm. It, it was a well, manuscript that kept on the microfilm. And I was able to borrow that to look for the good services of Douglas Kennedy. In fact, it's one of the benefits of the cancellation of Blue Street. So I actually had two years with very little to do it on book, other than use a microphone reader and walk my way through the manuscript. And so the other thing that came up is that the set of Sharp's field notes were deposited by more than the library for a while, and they were circulated around a number of um, historians, which I was making number three or four on the list, so I was able to get a, a very good deal. But in parallel, I went going to talk to all the collectors. Clive Carey, I mean, most of them have been dead for about some years ago. But Clive Carey had worked with Mary Neal, and he was a very fine musician, um, opera singer, um, then produced uh, plays and operas in London um, between the wars. Douglas Kennedy, of course, uh, followed Sharp, the director. Paul Carpenter, who was the secretary to Sharp for many years, Kevin really Scopely, the pessimist of Scopely, um, the, the key person connecting with Travis Morris, Rolf Gardner, who, who is condemned nowadays for being a semi fascist but I knew him quite well, visited him several times, 
Um, he was anything but the man who hated what Hitler did to the Germans. He did his best to restore relationships between um, Britain and Germany after the war. Um, and his idea of getting people back to roots meant that he bought his uncle bought him a farm in Dorset, the Father Magna. Um, he ran it as a green timber, grew all his own timber, to everything, uh, everything in other words, as you would today. He said he was 50 years ahead of the idea of green timber. Reverend Fox went on the first Tavling Morris Hall, Tommy Atkins was, went on the Chelling Morris Hall, which went to visit um, all the old houses. Fred Hamer, of course, Major Fryer, um, who was an interesting character, to say the least of it. He was a major before the First World War started. He trained at Farmer on Cody's kites. Had a notebook, all the way, to fly a kite, man carrying kite, and so on. Um, on his first flight during the war, they got caught, lost some fog, and in the hole, he never fought in the Soviet War. So he had 40, in 1930, he retired um, as a major still. Um, and then discovered Morris Anthony. Um, he really was <coughs> key in getting um, Ensham, Abingdon, and so on, reactivated. Russell were the, the war members I would saw. Seeing people. In parallel, the poor was watching, watching because I'm watching back to over extended period of years. Um, filming, I've got as you said, 75 hours of city, 75 hours of video archive. It will all be donated to the work um, the Wessex Film and Saint Archive of Winchester, me being a Hampshire man. Stay, yes, say that um, some of the things from filming of Saint Anthony are done by Bar City. We tried a lot of things over Bar City. Um, Marguerite ran the Abercorn State Dances. That's a fascinating period to talk about his work. Um, Dorset Knobs and Knockers, a uh, mixed sex team, of course. Um, and that led me to study status and read the accounts. And we had a workshop at Sparkle. Not just collectors, but there are a surprising number of old dancers still available to go and talk to. Complete circles had happened in. But at Ascot, um, there had been under Titty a revival by like a, a boy's side. Um, but it was sort of mixed because several women we talked to could do the dances as well. All dances at Bampton, three dances at Midford, three, three dances and a daughter, yeah. Chipping Camp and so on. These are people and have a chance to talk it. And the result of all this chatting and occurring was to increase the uh, publisher from 80 dancers to 350 in the Black Book. I've been running instructors for a long time. I don't suppose any of you remember any of the halls we ran up under there, or for that matter, the boys' chairs in Athens. Those who ever actually went on to Athens and actually danced where um, anoraks and so on in this gym, about the size of this. But with any cold, it's something to remember. Uh, Morris Federation had started, had workshops in various places, but we set on main farm at the beach. And of course, when Border got picked up, and I know when Border started, because the weekend my youngest son was born, um, I was due to run an instructional delivery to tell you, and we did. But Marty had started contractions before we left. That's and we left at one and we got to day three at three. And one of my sons stepped back with the suit next door, windows. It was quite busy, really. <laughs> Publications, not a great deal. The Country Dance Society of America, thanks to Tony Barron, published sets of notes in five volumes. Um, they were available to purchases, good, fine in the state of this country. Few people bothered to, um, and that suited me anyhow. Yeah. Most of the time, notes were distributed at workshops, um, and that was all. Um, 
A typical booklet, which I did in the workshop, it looks like that. They have that sort of pattern, and those are the ones. Some of those days are notable. The dancers of three to five in the North London, the day of the poll tax right. I had to cross London. Um, I got onto the North Circular, and my transmission broke. So I was towed all the way back home. <laughs> then I had to make my way by public transport through the riots in the centre of London. It was not very funny, really. There were people smashing windows and throwing um, night torches into windows and so on. So, but by now I'm afraid I may have to on television over the years with a number of television dancers. And I recorded those for the sake of knowing what the world had done. Nice but of course, I've got really a professional um, career, not just from Morris Man. And my professional career was a rocket scientist, one of those mythical characters of which we never had many in this country. And that's the sort of list of things that I was involved with for years. As a result, it brings its rewards. I became a principal consultant, which, believe it or not, means that uh, nobody ever consulted me. I just got on and did what I wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> I got paid a lot for it. A lot for the time, but nothing to bear what bank did, I tell you that. It got me the silver medal for the Royal Air Society and a CV. I deserved it, in my opinion, but that was it. The Morris Federation was good enough to recommend me for a gold medal. And thanks to the Morris Federation, I own my friend's medal, which is a gold medal of the year for effort. Now what we're going to do tomorrow is I've got helpers tomorrow as well. But we've got um, Vessels Lee and Juniper Hill to have a go at. We've got assistance from Sheffield and they come on, what's the rank in the city, Morris? Um, um, right, yeah. yeah. So we'll have a busy day tomorrow. Um, but the tonight for Sunday is going to be the worst, Morris. The, you have to believe it, but um, many years ago, a Welsh woman who lived in the Nagaro um, went to the Nagaro festival and could remember what she saw. And she told her daughter in Welsh the notation, what she remembered of the dancers. Now, this being all the Welsh have got, they've had to work on these to actually create dancers from them. And I have a, a note, the notation I have for the dance starts with her original notation and how it's been improved and improved and improved until I give you the last version that Carla did, which they made me dance about in a cold tip <laughs> somewhere near um, Swansea. So that will be Sunday's. That will keep you fairly busy, I hope, for the rest of the weekend. Now it's 10 o'clock, I would say, which means, unfortunately for me, my bedtime. And I see you all at sensible time tomorrow. I'll get going again. Thank, Thank you. you.